crafty friends Jen Cassell here I am back with a design team tutorial for the new witch hat that came out with the September release from scrap diva designs as always here is her website and all of the info on the back please make sure to use that hashtag scrap diva designs for some amazing inspiration also if you have not signed up for her email list do it ladies there are so many cool design team projects that are listed in the email it has links to all of the video tutorials it's it's a wealth of inf info so make sure you sign up for that also if i've inspired you in any way please feel free to use my coupon code gen 10 for 10 percent off your purchase of the shop so we're going to be focusing on this witch hat die. This is a collab with Erica and it's I. actually extremely easy to put together. And I'm going to show you how I designed it to put the together. The die is currently available for pre-order only. Thank you guys so much. I am so proud that my first release with Scrap Diva Designs sold out. So I'm super, super proud. So please head on over to Scrap Diva Designs and place your order if you haven't. If you have already bought the witch hat die, um, follow this tutorial to put it together. And I've already done the witch hat die two different ways. So of course, this is your standard way of putting it together. Witch hat box, you've got plenty of room in here for some goodies. The box itself, well, the hat is going to be um, like five and a quarter uh, for the brim of the hat. But inside, so the box itself is going to measure about three inches. And then uh, about an inch and a quarter in height. So you've got yourself a little room to put some fun stuff in there. I'm, um, I was thinking this is the perfect size for a couple of mini candy bars for the holidays. Like you could have these, someone suggested at individual place settings at Halloween. How stinking cute would that be? And once you put this together, you're going to realize it's really not that hard. The second way I did this box was I made it in half. I used it to decorate the witch shoe jelly bag that is also a new release this month for September. I'm going to get out all of our supplies. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Okay, so I have everything that we need lined up here. First, we're going to start the, with the base of the hat, and it's going to be this, this one here. You'll need one for the base, two if you want to make it super, super sturdy. So that right there. This is going to be this one on the back, and this is kind of your hat cover. Um, inside, you're going to see a little hexagon shape. I cut this out of the black and white uh, cat, and it is not going to be the same size as the one that you get from the interior of this piece, just to warn you. You're going to need two of the cones, and we're going to glue these together to form the base of the hat, okay? And then coming around on this side, we're going to need 10 of these. Those are going to be your layers for this. And then we're also going to need two of the larger ones right here. I've already taken the time to glue these together. Um, so you'll just glue them end to end. All right. And then we also have the smaller one right here. This is going to be the trim that goes around your hat. We need two of those. Finally, we also have the buckle. The buckle is going to come in two different parts. You're going to want to use some mint tape, washi, whatever you got on hand. I love this mint tape. And you're going to glue them down or you're going to tape them so they lie like this and run your machine so that you get this okay you're also going to want one more 
of these little uh, rectangle square pieces. And if you want to do a background for this, other than the trim on your hat, you would want two of these. I have also cut out the Hocus Pocus. So you get two different layers of the Hocus Pocus in here. It is a little bigger. I really, really love this font too. I haven't taken out the interior of the Hocus Pocus here, but you can get a good idea of what we're doing. It's obviously a layered font, so you get a background. And I did this super cool glitter card stock. This is all from 12 by 12. The pattern paper that I am using is the Prima, I think it was 31. It came out last year. I have a whole bunch left and I really wanted to do something like pink black coquette right now, which I'm totally digging. Um, I've also decided to cut some of these spiders. These spiders, I believe, are from the Spiderweb mini album. They came out this month as well. And last but not least, I did quite a few bows. So these are the spiderweb bows. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use. But if you have a larger base like I do for your die cutting machine, I always do extras. If I have a larger die set like this one, where I have to do, for instance, 10 of these, I'm going to put something else on the plate so that I'm not mindlessly die cutting things through. I have the Sizzix that has an eight and a half by 11 platform. So I have plenty of room to do something other than this right here. So I like to put multiples on there. That's why you'll see sometimes I'll have multiple bowls to use in my projects. I'll cut a ton of flowers because those are things that I'm always using in my craft room. So use your time in a more productive manner. That is my hands down number one secret for craft. I found ways to maximize my time in the craft. So the first thing that I'm going to do is put together my base pieces for the brim of the hat. I'm just going to use some regular Barely Arts glue for this. Okay. So I'm just going to find my center. And let's just set this aside. For this next part, I got out my scoring board. This is a trick that I picked up from electronic die cutting that I use in manual die cutting a lot. So if I'm doing something that has a lot of score lines, like this one, we're going to divide this into five pieces plus a tab. It starts to get a little crazy at the top, and I don't want to just, you know, not have a good line. So what I'll do is get out my scoring board. I have put a line down my scoring board using a permanent marker at the six inch mark. This is hands down uh, so helpful for me when I'm doing scoring. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the time to glue down all of my pattern paper pieces and I will be right back. So I have the two and now you're going to go through and then just uh, score on your score lines and look at how easy this is to do. Now that we've reinforced those score lines, you're going to get a perfect point at the top. I do like to use my bone folder, make sure that everything is nice and straight, very pressed. Okay, now I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna put some glue on my tab. and line these two up. Really use that bone folder to press everything down. Make sure that you have everything dry before moving along. Let's add our second tab. I'm going to use my bone folder to make sure that everything is pressed down. Perfect. I'll set this over here, let it cure, and we're going to start working on the box portion. 
So like I said, I've cut two of these and I've already glued them together. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention and just kind of started along. So what you're going to want to do after gluing them together, grab this piece and we're gonna start gluing down. I'm going to add my first tab underneath. line that right up I am going to use my work surface to make sure everything is nice and dry before moving along If you're not comfortable doing a couple of them at a time, it's okay. You can do just one tab at a time. And last but not least, you're gonna wanna put some glue on that tab there. Bring it all the way around. Just make sure all of those tabs are glued down. Now that you have this together, I put a whole bunch of glue on the bottom. Let's just find our center here. I love using Barely Art for this because it's got a little give to it. Really go over with your bone folder. I've been liking my silicone paintbrush for this. Guys, how easy was that, right? So we still have our trim to put on. Let me show you how I did the trim. So I'm gonna come over to this little tab right here, connect it, one more. Bring it over, okay. Now that we have that on there, we're just gonna bring it over, slide it on down. You're gonna have a little bit of space at the bottom and that's gonna help accommodate the buckle, okay? But what I'm gonna do is just kinda tuck some hot glue right along a couple of these sides. And that will help keep everything in place. There we go, that's it, you guys. Was that not the easiest witch's hat ever? Love, 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 love. All right, so let me decorate this bad girl and I will be right back. Ta-da! Isn't she cute? Okay, so I found this really cool pick and I think it was like Joann's or something like that. It's in their Christmas section. So I loved these and that's how I did this little like topper for it. I just simply cut these down. I got three of them out of each stem here. And you can see how much I have left. A lot, right? So I just poke them into this little poof ball at the top. Um, of course, I ended up putting some foam uh, underneath my Hocus Pocus. I did these cute little spider resin pieces. I did, um, this is the spider web die, but I replaced the bow in it. And this bow is the one from the heart mini album. And then you'll just see some more of these spikies. I have a couple of handmade flowers on here. Just so stinking cute. I wrapped the base with this really cool uh, black trim in my stash. I am just thrilled with the way this turned out. So let's take one more look at my original. So fun and happy. Love it. And then my pink and black spooky coquette version. So fun. All right, so thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. I'd be happy to get to them. Uh, as always, if I've inspired you in any way, please feel free to use my coupon code GEN10 for 10% off your purchase at the shop. 
So thank you again. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more crafty content. I'll see you in the next crafty video. Bye.